What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm super excited because I'm bringing you guys a video that a lot of you have asked for and it's how to prepare yourself for a Yu-Gi-Oh event. Now I'm not talking about locals, I'm talking about regionals, YCSs, even potentially nationals. So just before we hop into the video, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one. I've been doing how-to videos the entire week. The Yu-Gi-Oh community has been growing a ton recently so I think these videos are really important for people to know and for people to get an idea of how to go to these events and how to compete and be successful. Now I'm going to be breaking this video down into four parts. The first part being pre-event, the second part being the event entry, the third part being during the event, and the fourth part being post-event. Now these four parts are really really important, the first two being the more important ones because this essentially is going to determine how your experience at these events are. So the reason preparation is very key for these events is not only does it heighten your chance of actually winning an event and topping it and whatnot, it actually just makes the overall experience a lot better. Even if you don't do super well at the event itself, you can still have a really fun and good time and enjoy yourself at these things. So I don't want to keep you guys waiting for much longer let's get into the video okay so you are planning to go to a Yu-Gi-Oh event the first thing we need to talk about is the pre-event what you need to get done before you even step into the event room and now this might sound a little bit obvious but you have to understand that all these steps correlate together and they're very important because one step leads to the next and the first thing you're going to need is a deck yes you're going to need a deck to play of course to play Yu-Gi-Oh you're going to need Yu-Gi-Oh cards and so we're going to be starting off with the deck that you need now a deck is really important you want want to be well tested on it you want to know what the deck does but more importantly you also want to know what your opponent's decks do now that's going to be a conversation for another day when we talk about how to be competitive in the Yu-Gi-Oh scene however for today's video you just have to be prepared for the event and to be prepared you need your deck now as you guys can see I'm doing this video on a playmat make sure you guys bring a playmat to these kind of events technically you could get away without having one but it's really nice to have one it keeps your cards clean keeps your opponent's cards clean and it makes you look like a much more veteran duelist which is kind of nice even if you're new to things it's all about the appearance and unlike just any locals you can't actually just walk into the event with your deck you're actually going to need to bring something with you and that is your deck list now if you guys go online and just type in Yu-Gi-Oh or konami deck list you guys are going to find this sheet you can also fill it out online or you can write it down by hand but this is really important to fill out before the event it's very important to get down because it does two things for you one it solidifies the deck list that you're going to be playing at the event but two this lets the hosts know what you're playing so that you can't go to the event and start switching decks halfway through. This makes it very official, essentially. Now, yes, they provide these papers at the event and you can write it out there. However, if you get this done ahead of time, it makes your life so much easier because you have to write down the entire card name. So for example, if you have Nibiru in your main deck, you can't just put three Nibiru. You have to put the entire name, which can be annoying for a lot of cards. So type it out, print it out beforehand. It makes your life so much easier if you get that done ahead of time. So this is one thing you're gonna have to do before the event even starts. Now, what are some things you're going to actually want to bring to the event outside of your deck? And of course, the deck list over here, you're going to want to bring things that are going to help you during your games and during the tournament, right? So one thing I like to do is always have some dice on me. This is really important to have because it makes life so much easier when you just have it ready on you. Because what ends up happening is you don't have to look around asking people for dice. You can get your match started right away. And it's just something that's really small, but really important to have because you'll just be ready to go as soon as you start playing. Now, speaking of being ready to go as soon as you start playing, something that's very important when you play Yu-Gi-Oh! is keeping track of your life points. Now, you can use your phone now because we have the Neuron app, or what I personally like to do, I like to have a pen and paper, and you guys can see here, I write my rounds down. I have my life points written down here, so I know exactly how the rounds go, and this is actually really nice because you can look back and recap your duels throughout the day, and I like to keep this just because it does keep track of the tournament for me. And another nice thing is you can always look back and be like, okay, these are the matchups that I played against. This is what I won against. This is what I lost against. I like to always have some kind of paper and some kind of pen with me because again, you keep track of life points, keep track of your rounds. Anything that needs to be written down can be written down so you can look at it whenever you need. With the Neuron app, you can now obviously do life points on your phone, make it a lot easier. However, keep in mind that some event locations don't have the greatest Wi-Fi. So if you can't get access to your phone or you want to save your battery, this is really clutch to have. So here we're starting off with our deck, of course, very important in our deck box. We have some dice, which is very important because this is going to help us play. And we have a pen and some paper so that we can write down our life points and keep track of everything going on in the day. Okay, so now we're ready to duel, right? But before we even step into the event still, we need to be prepared in one aspect that's very, very important, and that is food. Now keep in mind, not a lot of places are going to have food in the building. And even if they do, there's not going to be a lot of time between rounds. I hate to say it, 
but a lot of rounds go to the 35 minute mark at least for you and it's going to be very tough for you to step out go get food eat before your next round these things go fast and you would be very surprised how quick the day goes by so i always like to have some sort of snack or something on me that i can always eat during the day now for me i like to have a variety of snacks i don't want to just eat granola bars all day but you should have some sort of food source with you because it's going to be very tough for you to actually get food at the event or make time for food at the event i know it's going to sound weird but it's very important you guys have food with you because you don't want to get grumpy you don't want to get hungry halfway through the event you don't want your stomach to start hurting it's really good to have some sort of food with you but speaking of food we're going to put the snacks to the side one thing that is the most important the most important thing you need at an event and if you guys listen to anything i say today this is the thing that you need you literally cannot live without it and that is water you need to have a water bottle on you at all times there's always going to be fountains so if you run out of water you're always going to be able to fill it back up this is the most important part of an event keep in mind if you're going to be out in a stuffy room with lots of people around you talking to to every single one of your opponents talking to friends you're gonna get thirsty real fast and dehydration is a real thing at these events if you just stay hydrated you'll be fine for the whole day i promise you that water is the most important thing that you guys can take to these events speaking of i'm thirsty talking to you guys right now so i'm gonna have a sip of water <sighs> yeah yeah, it's good. Now, this last thing I'm going to show you guys is optional, but I like to bring these to the events, and that is a trade binder. I always like to have a trade binder because when you go to events, you're exposed to a lot more people that you don't see on an everyday basis. And that means you're exposed to a lot more cards that you can have access to, cards that you might be looking for, but you can't find at your local shop. That's why I always like to have a trade binder with me. And with that, you guys can see right here the essential things you need before you even enter the event. Everything I've been talking about so far is just the pre-event. Everything that you need to have planned and ready to go before you even step out of your house. Now, one thing I want to touch on real quick, and it should be obvious, but I do want to note it just real quick. Make sure the deck when you take it to the event is sleeved up, but not only is it sleeved up, they should all be the exact same sleeves, the exact same color. And that's because if you have different sleeves, you could actually get a warning or even a game loss. Worst case scenario, it could even lead to a disqualification because you can get caught potentially for cheating. Even if you don't mean to cheat, it is very important to have your extra deck and your main deck in the exact same sleeves. Now, the extra deck can be different sleeves from the main deck however as long as the extra deck sleeves all match and the main deck sleeves all match i'm also going to talk about the side deck sleeves they should also match your main deck sleeves that's very important to note because you don't want to lose because you have incorrect sleeves right so make sure to note that because it's very important to know okay so we're done with the pre-event stuff and that's arguably the most important stuff that you need to know but now let's talk about event entry now Yu-Gi-Oh events can always range in their cost they switch up the price on us every once in a while i remember it used to be 25 dollars. now i think it's like 35 dollars for canadians so yes that that does change however just be prepared beforehand to know how much it's going to cost to enter the event when you do enter the event you guys get five packs on entry which could obviously be really good for you you could pull a starlight you could pull a secret rare it could be also very nice in that sense but more importantly i do want to talk about one thing when you do go to enter for an event there is going to be a sheet that you're going to have to put your cost id and your name on that essentially signs you up for the event this is separate from the deck list that you have to submit as well in person so when you get to these events there's usually a table or a desk with a line or maybe there's no one in line and you got lucky but there's usually a lineup area where it's sign up and registry you go in you pay your 25 dollars you give them the slip you give them your deck list and you're ready to go they give you your five packs and there you go that's it it's easy as that you've entered the event now keep in mind konami's policy changes every once in a while and it can get updated for right now we're required to wear masks at an event so make sure you have a mask as well but if in the future there are updates you guys have to keep up to date with that i just want to let you guys know that konami's policy does change but just stay in touch with the policy and you're good to go so now you've entered the event what is going to happen well first things first you do usually have some time to go walk and talk around meet new people trade cards if you want before the event begins but when the event does begin here's what's going to happen. The host will put up some papers on the wall with your names and they are in alphabetical order, keep that in mind. Or sometimes they'll have a QR code where you can go online on your phone, type in your Kasi ID, and it's gonna tell you what table you're on. But either way, whether it's on your phone or on the wall, you're gonna go find your name. Once you find your name, it's going to have a table number beside it. So then what you're gonna do is you're gonna head over to that table and that is your first round. A judge usually before round one will have a little conversation with everyone, make sure everyone is on the same page, and then they will say, your round one has begun 
From then point on, you have 40 minutes to play. This time is used to duel with your opponent. Hopefully you get done early so you can get more time to relax before your next round. But this is a time where you're gonna be dueling your opponent. You're gonna be sitting down with a bunch of people around you, face to face with your opponent, and you're gonna get your game on. Now, a lot of things happen in the event outside of just dueling. You can walk around, meet new people. You can trade cards. This is one of the most fun things, in my opinion, about Yu-Gi-Oh! is because there's so many different aspects to it. I've met so many of my friends at these kind of events. If you go to events more often, people will start to recognize recognize you you'll start to recognize people you make a lot more acquaintances it becomes a lot more fun so during the event all I want to say and my biggest advice to anyone going to these events is just have a good time don't tilt too hard with your rounds and even if you end up dropping after three rounds and you go x3 who cares go meet some people go make some friends go trade some cards have fun. Depending on where you live, you may not have these big official events very often, so you do want to make the most out of each event that you can go to. Now, just before we get into the post event, which usually happens when people drop out of the main event, keep in mind that during the event, a lot of places will host side events. There are things like when I'm at, some events even do speed duels. There's a lot of things that actually go on during the tournament outside of just the main event. So if you guys do end up dropping out of the main event, go talk to a judge, talk to a representative and see when the side events begin. Maybe one of those interests you and maybe you can enter one of those. But now we're moving on to the post event. The post event really is just when you're done playing the game, you want to go home. It doesn't necessarily have to happen after the event is done because sometimes the event is done early for some people and you just want to go relax. So all you have to do is say bye to everyone and get the heck out of there. There's not much to the post event. You just want to go home taking something away from the event. You don't want to go home salty or tilted. I know a lot of people that it happens to and I try to not make it happen to me because these events really don't happen that often and you do want to enjoy it. Now I know it won't always go in your direction. You're not going to top or win every single event or maybe you're just that good and you do but if you don't it's okay take it as a learning experience the only way you get better is if you take these experiences learn from them and then from there you can start to make better decisions in the future if it means fine-tuning your deck if it means taking different preparation methods there's so many different ways and so many different things you can learn from these events so the post event is just really important to keep in mind don't get too angry with any of the results and if you guys do end up topping congratulations be happy get excited keep in mind that these are things to celebrate if you guys come top 8, top 16, celebrate it. Don't let anyone tell you top 16 is not good enough. It is good enough. Topping an event is very, very difficult. I'm personally from Toronto and there's never really been an event under 300 players. So if you're topping an event with 300 plus players, be happy, celebrate, enjoy your time, right? And for anyone who doesn't top the event, it's okay. You got the next one. All you got to do is believe in yourself and trust me, you're going to enjoy every single experience. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. I know I talked a lot, but I really wanted to break down the event into four categories because I think these four categories are very important to keep in mind when you are planning to go to an event. Now keep in mind the pre-event I think is the most important because if you go into the event prepared with your deck, with your tools, with your water, with your food, you go into the event prepared, you're never really going to have a bad time because you're always going to go in knowing that no matter what the outcome is, you're going to enjoy yourself, you're going to take that experience and make the most out of it. I personally love going to Yu-Gi-Oh events. I'm going to be going to nationals in a few days. If any of you guys are heading to nationals, come say hi to your boy Spanko. I'm always down to say hi, take pictures, meet everyone. I love you guys so much. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you guys haven't already. I upload five days a week. You get combo videos, deck profiles, duels, all that kind of good stuff. And this week of how-to videos. Thank you guys. I appreciate you all from the bottom of my heart. And with that, Spanko signing out. Peace.